house of hell. Now I started this way back earlier in the year and I'm very sorry it took so long to, to get there. Um, it's been just through my workload which has been very very busy um, but it's better late than never I say. Um, so we will um, go back to the house of hell. Um, I do remember I got quite a lot of inboxes in regards to um, what we should happen, what should happen next, basically. Um, and just to recap, we entered the room of an old lady and we defeated two Great Danes. Um, and she asked us festivities are. Um, the response I had was mainly in favour of the secret rooms in the house. Um, we've already figured out that there's a very something very strange and mysterious going on inside the house of hell. Um, that seems to be the response that I had from, from you guys in regards to um, what we should do next. So, without further ado, we will go and ask about the secret rooms in the house. Three, two, one. Okay. Before I answer your question, she says, you must tell me something. What is my name? Do you know what a name is? If so, you will have noted her reference number to turn to, should you be asked this question. Turn to this reference. If you do not know her name, she will not answer your question, no matter what you threaten to do to her plants. And you will leave the room by turning to 159. Now, listeners, if we remember, we were given a code, um, which I wrote down and circled about 20,000 times, um, and that was 8-8, eight, eight, because we did see the message on the window. If this confuses you, I suggest you watch House of Hell Part 1 and 2. Um, so we're going to turn to 88, and this is what she says. She curses. Damn you, stranger, she hisses. All right, then. I will answer your question. Which question did you ask her? We asked her about the secret rooms in the house. 295. Secret rooms, she laughs. Why, this house is riddled with secret passageways and secret rooms. Most are in the cellar, though, but some are upstairs passages leading to them. The most cunning secret room is the master's most trusted hiding place. It can only be reached by one way, and that is from under the stairs in the cellar. A password is needed, and I know the old one, but it has recently changed. Chiku will know the new password. The woman's eyes close, as if the conversation has been a great strain. You leave her and consider the information that you have been given. When you are in a position to find the secret room in question, under the cellar stairs, you may try to find it by deducting ten from the reference you will be on at that time, and turning to that new reference. No other clue to its location will be given, but first you must find the password. Leave the room by turning to one. So let me take a note of that. So it's minus 10 of the reference we are in. Secret. Passageway. Okay. So we are not going to be prompted for this. So we must remember. Explored more 
most of the rooms upstairs, you decide to risk searching the ground floor. You follow the landing back around the staircase and creep downstairs. Ten to one, three, two. You walk down the stairs cautiously, looking in every direction. There is no one about. In the hallway below, you may choose either a door on the left, a door on the right, or you can walk up to the front door and open it. Well, the front door seems very obvious. Something's going to happen, I think. Um, so, let me make a judgment call and go to the door on the left. Three, five, three. into a very large but cosy drawing room. The dying embers of a warm fire burn in the hearth. Comfortable chairs are arranged around the fireplace. Two glasses and a decanter stand on a glass top table between the chairs. There are plants and tall stands on either side of the windows. And there is another door next to the one you came in. Do you wish to explore the room further? Or leave through the other door? Or would you have a little tipple from the decanter? Well, I think we should examine the room a little further. One, one, nine. Makes you wonder what you would do if this was real. Will you start by looking through the ornaments on the corner shelf? Or will you examine the fire and the mantelpiece? Let's look at the ornaments on the corner shelf. There are several delicate items of pottery and a few silver pieces on the shelf. One of the silver ornaments is a short dagger. You may take this with you if you want. It is rather too short to be really useful weapon, but nevertheless, you may add two skill points when you use it in a fight. There is also a silver hip flask. If you've not already done so, you may take this flask and fill it with brandy. Now you may either examine the fireplace or leave the room. So I'll make a note of what we have there. We've got a hip flask. Silver hip flask. And a short dagger. Plus two on skill when fighting next. Let's examine the fireplace. sits on the center of an elaborately carved wooden mantelpiece. A number of letters are jammed in behind the clock, and you reach for them. As you do, your sleeve catches one of the carved images on the woodwork, and it moves. You lean forward to examine it. It is a small, carved, demonic face, which can be moved sideways. Do you wish to see what lies behind the wooden face? Or would you want to read through the letters? I think if we have found this little detail, we should examine it. So I'm going to look to see what lies behind the wooden face. I hope you agree with me. Um, the little carving moves to reveal a button next to the mantelpiece behind it. You consider whether or not to press the button. As you are deep in thought, you do not notice what is happening to the fire. In the grate, the fire has come back to life. Strong flames are licking the chimney and considerable heat has been given off. You feel the heat and step backwards. As you do so, two small figures leap from the fire to face you. 
these are fire sprites are small. They come up to your knees, but their flame and bodies burn with the vigour of the fire from which they arose. They hover in the air just above the carpet, for if they touch anything it bursts into flame. Do you wish to fight these creatures, or will you try another approach? advancing creatures. Will you pick up the brandy decanter? Or would you move slowly backwards toward the window? Well, brandy won't work because it's alcohol and it's an inflammatory. Or am I being too cautious here? I'm not sure what to do. It doesn't make any sense to, to throw brandy over. sprites follow you as you back towards the window. Pretending to be terrified, you make for one of the plant pot stands and attempt to hide behind it. But when the sprites are near enough, you strike. Grabbing the large plant pot on top of the stand, you hurl the contents over the little creatures. The soil covers them and douses their flames. In an instant, they have disappeared. Would you ever have expected that to have happened? Definitely not. Three, seven, five. You step back toward the fireplace and examine the secret button again. Will you press it? Or will you leave the drawing room? We've got to press it, haven't we? Um, let's give that a go. the button near a small click. Then you hear another sound, and when you swing round to face the corner shelf, beside the shelf, a sliding panel is opened in the wall. You walk over to investigate and bend down to look at the opening. Too late. You realise that the panel has revealed not a tunnel at all, but a false opening. The wall behind is solid, but it has served its purpose. You have been lured into a trap. You are standing on a trap door which opens beneath you and you fall downwards. Oops. 397. Sorry about that, guys. Down you fall for several meters until you finally land in a heap on something soft. Add one fear point for the fright. Test your luck. If you are lucky, you are unhurt. If you are unlucky, you have twisted your wrist. Um, we're lucky. You'll pick yourself up and verify there is no serious damage. You have landed on a mound of earth and hay, and you realise that you are in a cellar underneath the house. The room is fairly small with one door. Outside you can hear a shuffling noise coming closer. Will you spring toward the door to surprise whoever is approaching? Will you quickly search the room for a weapon in case you need to defend yourself? Well, I think 
we don't have the time to find something to, to defend ourselves, so I'm going to hide behind the door, since I'm not saying my decisions are particularly good either. The door slowly opens, and you find yourself close to the wall. The man who enters is short and stocky, and appears to be bent double. He is not armed. He peers into the room and scratches his head. Evidently, he heard something and is perplexed at finding nothing in the room. Will you step forward and announce yourself? I keep hidden and hope he leaves. I think it's foolish to announce ourselves. Let's keep hidden. stares once more into the room, shrugs his shoulders and leaves, closing the door behind him. You are alone again. After waiting a few moments, you decide to leave the room. Turn to 116. Outside the room, the passageway runs onwards, past the door on the left. Do you wish to open along the do you wish to continue along the passageway or explore the area? Let's explore. One, six, six. Exploring the area, you find nothing particularly unusual. You see a wooden door to the left of the passageway, which you can try by turning to two, two, one. Or you can walk away a little further up and try some other door on the right hand wall. If you'd prefer to ignore these doors and continue up the passageway, turn to 91. Well, a door's a door, I guess. It's, it's the luck of the draw, so why don't we just try the door to the left? Two, two, one. coming from within the room. Whoever or whatever is in there certainly doesn't sound too friendly. Will you try the door or will you open the door opposite or continue along the passageway? I think we should open the door opposite. Um, I'll take the hint that they're not friendly. The room seems to be a dungeon of some sort for along one wall of four cells with heavy iron bars locking their occupants in. No one seems to be on your side of the bars, so you walk in to have a look. A twig cracks as you step forward, and immediately three bodies spring to life in one of the cells. They are a ragged lot, clothes in tatters, hair disheveled and grubby. They all reach forward through the bars and plead with you to release them. Each one has been captured by the Earl of Drummer's servants and imprisoned to await what horrendous fate. Nearest to you was a pretty young girl. Her face and hair are dirty and she's in tears. She desperately wants to be released. In the second cell is a tall man with strong features. He has accepted that he is about to die and bravely asks you to kill him now to deprive the evil Earl of his pleasure. In the third cell is a balding man in a grey gown who says nothing. Do you wish to try and help these prisoners? You may talk to one of them if you wish. Would you like to talk to the young girl, or the dark man, or the balding man? If you'd rather not talk to any of them, you may turn and leave the room. And there they are. in the dark man. I'm interested to see. He's not hysterical like the girl. The dark man courageously
courageously bears his chest and asks you to plunge a knife into his heart to end his suffering. If you have a knife, you can do as he wishes, or you can refuse to talk to one of the other prisoners. I don't think we should do anything rashly here. Let's speak to the other prisoners. You step aside over the, to the next cell. The sound of footsteps outside the door makes you turn quickly. Four men dressed in white gowns and wearing ghost goat's heads appear at the door. I told you, said one. I knew I could hear something. It looks like somebody wants to free our prisoners. Come on, brothers. They rush towards you, and you must resolve your battle with their leader who attacks you first. And the leader has a skill of eight and a stamina of nine. So we'll let him have the first round. And it's eight at sixteen. And we take two of him. surround and capture you. One of them runs off to get the keys to the cells. When he returns, you were locked in the fourth cell. Your adventure ends here. Can you believe it? I feel guilty, because I think I should let you have the decision. I'm going to go back to the original is naughty, it's cheating, but it's kind of my fault, and I know that um, I'd like to give you guys um, some choices. So we will talk to the young girl. 322. Two. The girl is hysterical. It seems like she is in a district nurse who has been assigned to the area. She knocked on the door, was invited in and captured. She pleads with you to help her, and her voice rises to a scream. But what can you do? The keys to the cells are nowhere to be seen. You begin to get worried, and her hysterics may attract the attentions of the occupants of the house. So you try to calm her down. Do you want to talk to one of the others as well? Or will you leave the room quickly? I think we should leave the room we end up in the same place as where we just have. Further up the passageway is another door to the right-hand wall. Do you wish to try this door or continue along the corridor? We will continue on the corridor. 393. The passageway widens to a small chamber. Although it is dark, you can see a staircase going up a few metres ahead of you. To your right, the chamber opens to a wide area. You step forwards and almost immediately a twittering noise puts you on your guard. Suddenly you feel something land on your head and dip sharp claws into your scalp. You realise and swat it away. Your hand touches a small leathery body in 
a pair of wings that start to flap as it rises above your head. Bats. A number of them are flapping around your head, darting and scratching with their claws. And you must add one for your opponent for the shock. Do you want to run up the stairs, hide under the stairs, or fight the bats? Let's go under the stairs. Ah, the secret passageway. Minus ten. Let's hide under the stairs. You shelter under the stairs and fend off the bats with your hands. Soon you discover that they cannot get at you while you are tucked away and they flap off back to the corner from which they came. When all is quiet again, you may decide your next move. Will you head up the stairs? Or will you explore the bat's chamber? Now, um, I wonder if this works. It did say minus 10 on your current reference, which is 320. So we'll try 310 to see if it makes any difference. wish to look for secret rooms, turn to 276, otherwise return to the last reference and choose again. Ah, we need to know the password. We didn't know the password, did we? Right, okay. Maybe I can leave this decision up to you. Um, we will explore the bats chambers. decision for you actually because um, I thought there is now. Where would you wish to look? The corner from where the bats came? Along the back of the wall or under the stairs? Let's have a look along the back wall. Three, five, six. You feel along the wall for any sign of a secret entrance. But you find nothing. Just as you're beginning to think you're wasting your time, your left hand dislodges a brick. Behind the brick is a lever. You pull the lever and a rumbling noise comes from the wall nearby. A section of the wall slides to one side, revealing a small entrance just large enough to climb through. You look inside but it is pitch black. Would you want to step through this doorway, or would you rather not risk it and climb the stairs instead? Well, maybe you can decide what happens in the next one. Um, what would you like to do? If you want to, leave a comment. I'll try and get back to this one very, very soon. I'll not make it as long as the last time. So yeah, so I've got 30 minutes on the clock there, so maybe it's not too long. Um, doing these little short installments like this might be a better idea. You decide, eh? But do let me know what you think we should do next, and we will continue on very soon. Thank you.